My name is Subi Rahman. I'm one of the founding members of the Mind Ensemble. The Mind Ensemble came from the brain of my friend Robert Alexander, who discovered me at Grizzly Peak, a bar in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He learned that I had conducted research on brain-computer interfaces at the University of Michigan, and he brought me on board. Uh, I didn't really know what I was getting into at the time, but it turned into an amazing adventure. Here's my summary of the experience. Art music. But what happens when we look at the very essence of an idea? Every time we come up with an idea, there are electrical impulses occurring in our brain. What happens when we take those electrical impulses directly and convert them into music? We've skipped the mechanism. And by doing so, I think we've drastically reshaped what the creative process is capable of. We're not limited by years of training required to master an instrument. We're not even limited by the ability to move a muscle. All that we're limited by is the ability to think. Our performance made use of the emotive epoch, a consumer-level EEG interface. Now, what is an EEG? EEG stands for electroencephalography. What these machines do, or brain hats as we refer to them, is they record electrical signals that are coming through the brain uh, via electrodes that are attached to the human scalp. These signals are then amplified and sent to a computer which can analyze the data and display them. Recently, there's been efforts to market EEGs to consumers. One of these is the emotive epoch you see here. Uh, here's an example of the emotive epoch being used for its true purpose. Rob Alexander thought otherwise. Um, and so I started thinking about um, all this new technology that was coming out that allows people to um, use brainwaves to control different types of devices, like the emotive EPOC is primarily used um, like as a video game controller, essentially. And I just started thinking, what if there were a group of people who were interested in hacking this device and working with this kind of technology to create new interfaces for creative expression? So just realizing that the technology had become available at a consumer level for people to be doing this work and also realizing that there are so many talented and really brilliant people here at the university interested in working on these kind of projects. Um, and from there, you know, it just started um, with a grant proposal. Some people got together and we wrote it up and that was that. <laughs> Rob developed the MindSynth software, which was the backbone of our performance efforts. It might look a little intimidating here, but it's really quite simple. On the left, we have different types of brain data we can choose from. The first of these are passive states. The emotive epoch comes with software that has various algorithms that can discern the emotional states of the user. For example, here it can make use of the engagement state, excitement, long-term excitement, which is averaged over a larger degree of time, a meditation, and frustration. These types of data are always on and are always at a certain level. The next types of data are muscle data. The emotive is capable of picking up various types of muscle activity through its sensors. Uh, these types of data can be thought of like plucking a violin or a guitar. They're like on-off switches. The last types of data are active states. Well, what's cool about the emotive software is you can train it to memorize certain thought patterns, like thinking push, or pull, or lift. Uh, this is like bowing a violin. The data comes on for as long or as short of a time as your brain commands. This data is then sent to a MIDI controller, shown here. We can use five different types of brain data at one time. This is then sent to various effects, mixers, and math operations if we wish to alter the sound further. The software is also capable of sending MIDI data to other programs like Logic. So here's a few examples of this software in action from our performance in April 2011. Here we have Laura Gaines, seated watching a set of random video images on a screen. Our concept was something like a clockwork orange. Her brain state would be recorded, and it would alter the sound of the piano, causing it to reverberate more. Uh, I'll let Laura explain more here. Some of the sounds you will be hearing now textures, 
are created from the output of my brain in real time. In this way, I can hear the sound of my own brain as music. This is called neurofeedback. Like meditation, it pulls you deeply into your own mental experience. This is my piece. What I did was to take Charles Gounod's Ave Maria and replace the singer with two brains. You can hear two melodic lines in the upper range, which is data from our brains converted into sound. What we have here is Laura's brain controlling the musical texture of the piece, like the drum noises that you can hear. Some pieces had entirely different concepts. The sound of this piece is influenced by how excited the users were. I think you might be able to guess what's happening here. Are we doing this? <laughs> we can create a piece. Seriously. <laughs> Data has no voice. It cannot and does not speak until we enable it, until we, as biased beings, shape it and sculpt it and decide how our objectives can be justified by it. For the Mind Ensemble, we're currently planning on um, next year holding the conference, actually, and putting on another performance where we flesh out some of these ideas. Um, so with the Mind Ensemble, with our previous performance, we started just to hit the tip of the iceberg. And so with our next performances, we're going to flesh out a whole bunch of concepts. Um, we're really also interested in engaging with all of these different people in the community who are interested in um, you know, embracing these ideas. So it's going to be fascinating to see what other people come up with, um, what people in the group come up with. And at this point, um, the sky is the limit, really, because um, when you think about what's possible with the brain, the human brain, um, and when you think about expression as taking place um, with the brain as an interface for musical expression, then you know, there really are no limits to something like that. To work with these tools generates a unique physiological and mental feedback. Suddenly you find yourself hearing what you see, seeing what you think, and reflecting in an organic meditation, dissolving connections between hardware, between software, and between one's senses. Data is only valuable once it is interpreted, once it is parsed, once questions are asked of it, and once conclusions are drawn from it. And the answers you get depend upon the questions you ask.